Good afternoon, San Francisco. My name is Gregory, and I'm coming from Belgium. And I hope in the next coming 30 minutes, really to focus on the, on the topic of the power of the customer. I think you all, as future leaders, I'm sure that for many months and many years, you already are trying to get as close as possible to your customers by co-creating products and services to make sure that you're getting close or very close to their personal ambitions, but also so keep far away from what they do not like. Now, before I continue, like I said, I'm Gregory Verlinden, and I'm part as of Cognizant, and I'm proud to be part of Cognizant. Cognizant has a big heritage of always being very leading in being an early adopter around technology and also doing innovation on the edge. I'm also extremely proud that we are a very multicultural environment. And last week, I think some magic happened, is that our Indian colleagues succeeded in landing on the moon. And the moon lander is called Prayan. And this is in Sanskrit. Sanskrit the word means wisdom. And if you scale it down and you go to Gyan, this is all is about knowledge. Well, I hope in the next coming 30 minutes to show you that generative AI brings us an extensive part of new knowledge, which I hope that we all will be apply to create more wisdom in our own lives. But let's now go back. Okay. Customer experience, or the segment of one, or hyper-personalization of how we call it. Let's be honest, happy customers always buy more. Secondly, I think we are all conscious that if you look to customer experience, we've been throwing like hell money to it, but we miserably failed, and we will need to reset and restart the way of how we deliver customer experience. Thirdly, a lot of research has proven that even your customers are willing to pay a higher price if the products or the services that you're delivered are sustainable. And fourthly, if I look to my son, he only start doing financial or banking actions at 8 o'clock in the evening and hardly do anything overnight. So in the context of the segment of one, I think we will read to reimagine every aspect. And I see three core categories. The first category is the focus on the persona. For many years, in the context of hyperpersonalization, we have tried to understand the individual. I've learned that this is not good enough. We also need to understand the community around the individual. When I was talking with our marketing lady last week, she had dinner with her friends. And since today, she's buying eco paper. I need to know that. The second topic is the marketplace. The marketplace is where we connect the customer with our enterprise. And they will see there, many companies are trying to apply the kind of Amazon model next to their car products and services. They are selling more and other things, and they're also leveraging the ecosystem. And then thirdly, our core. If I want to be digital in the front end, and I want to get into a real-time dimension, but if my core is not modernized and still is a lot, of, a lot of manual handshakes happening there, I will never be able to deliver on that promise. And there you already see with Genetive AI, we have a massive opportunity. I will talk mostly about our generative customer experience navigator, which I think is focused on the personas. But on the marketplace, also there the concept of indeed the generative knowledge navigators, where we indeed are able to fast track information discovery. We are able to create much more advanceable insights and augment our decisions is a quite powerful means. And then if we talk about the core, yeah, the core, I think we want to optimize processes, yeah? But also do not forget in the core, and we have been in one of our thought leadership papers around the future of us, data management is one of the most underestimated jobs that we need to do. Guess what? Generative AI can help us to complete this journey. How does it all connect together? Well, like I said, the power of the customer is increasing much more. And I think I will prove even that it's getting into a kind of insane state. But we need to accept that this is part of the reality. A lot of the organizations are trying to create kind of new revenue models yeah, to their car services. Look in the financial world. I have some financial customers that really are creating a kind of marketplace to create also type of new revenue models. Yeah. Equally also, indeed, I would say to have an all-around services perspective. 
We still need to optimize control, but I think I see that a lot of enterprises really want to become the best friends of their customers. They want to keep their customers on track. They want to become their life coach, their personal advisor. And to be able to succeed in doing that, there is one essential part. We cannot broadcast any more information to them. We need to get into an active dialogue. And I'm proud that I can mention this, yeah? Because I think part of creating that emotional connection for a lot of you all in this audience, I think the implementation of conversational AI was already a big step. And I'm very proud that we are allowed to mention it in the fact that we are a partner of ING Bank, who has a clear vision around the human channel vision strategy, where indeed the core entry point is their mobile banking app. But they have succeeded with the implementation of conversational AI to deflect much more to chat, at the same time to receive and to cut to a higher level of customer satisfaction. But equally also true, yeah, when they see it's becoming indeed difficult, Still, they get the human touch of the video call that starts up where the customer gets the human advice. And again, this is a nice example of an extremely first good step in the context of creating that emotional uh, connection. But guess what? Conversational AI is good, but the context of intense and intent creation is still, a is still a burden. Could we do something about that? So let's now start about generative AI. And I think it all started a little bit in February, and I think we were honored to be able to participate and collaborate with, with our customers, but also leverage the beta products of, of Google. And I think I've learned two things. First of all, you do not know more than me, so I think we all need to co-create co co and collaborate every day, because the world is so moving fast that the reality is in the combination of the knowledge of both of us. What today is possible or not possible, tomorrow is possible. So we need to continuously track and follow every day what is happening. But then the good enough statement first is the perfect tailors. Perfect job. I've learned that there are three types of weighing of how to leverage foundational models or apply generative AI. You can apply it out of the box based on API calls, but you also can take a tailored generative AI approach which I will show we have done, and we have taken that as an opportunity. And then the third one, I think I don't know if you saw it as cognizant, but we're also com quite committed to make sure that certain large language models are getting into a certain domain, a certain function of value, where we help to create, to complete the cortex of the large language models. But here is the magic that I think is creating all the excitement in the context of the impact on the customer journey. Multi-channel, multi-language, multi-role. The CEO can talk with an agent. Somebody sitting in Manila can talk French with somebody sitting in Belgium. Yeah? And also, I think in the multi-channel perspective, I can build a history and a memory that there is no reset anymore of the communication with my customers. So I'm getting by default to an extreme rich dialogue. By the way, I do this also by leveraging my own information because I want to differentiate. And you see there on the right side, yeah? It can create a substantial cost decrease, which we all like within the enterprise, but I think what is far more important, it also creates bigger motivation within our organization. We have now customer services agents with bigger type of motivation, yeah? And let's be honest, what's the best source for customer satisfaction is ha having ha happy employees by, because by default they will deliver uh, a service which I think is, uh, is better. I'm always saying instead of lip services, we made our hands dirty. And we proved whatever we have envisioned together with our customers brought it into reality. And we defined three personas. First of all, using generative AI in direct interaction with the customer. Second is call it the call agents or the financial advisors or the advisors within the company to, to make use of generative AI as a product, productivity tool to enrich the dialogues. And a third persona was before even a customer gets into a human communication that we are pre-prepped to immediately kick off the right communication. And we do this 
by leveraging and using information coming out of our conversational AI systems, out of our call center systems, out of our CRM databases, out of our product databases. So I think we have been leveraging this big time. I'm always saying I've been honored to work together with my teams, with different financial institutions, different telcos and different media companies. And I think that is where we have created the excitement in what we have and what we will show around our tailored, uh, tailored infobot that we have created. Because what were the design of the customer experiences ex uh, principles? First of all, we needed to make sure that we create the right questions and answers. There needs to be a reasoning, a history, a memory. We tried the calculation and certainly the personalization. Let's start. The soccer dilemma. The left side is the customer services that I should have called. But guess what, what happened? It was Friday noon. My setup box from my television failed. It was broken. Okay, I'm renting the device, so I went to the services job shop and they gave me another setup box. I come at home, the auto install fails. What do I do? I pick up the phone and I call the customer service and they say, Mr. Verlinden, bad luck, it's four o'clock. Our back office is already starting the weekend. We will not be able to do anything. And so you will need to wait until Monday before we can look about how to fix the perspective. And I'm saying, guys, but it's weekend. Do I now need to tell my family no television this weekend? I will be the bad messenger, they will kill me. Yeah, Mr. Verlinden, sorry, but we cannot do anything. So, as being a responsible dad, I go to the family and say, no television this weekend. And guess what my daughter said? Daddy, no problem. We have an iPad. We have an app, a television app on the iPad from the same telco company. We have a smart TV. I launch the TV on my app, I do a swipe, and we look television. I say, oh my God. Well, I think what we have proven here, <laughs> this was really awesome, by scraping some of the forums of discussions where all the telco discussions are happening, we brought that information into play, and look what happened there. Imagine that the customer services agent that was serving me had that information available. He or she would have said to me, Mr. Verlinde, you have a problem. But in the meanwhile, maybe, do you have an iPad? Do you have a second television? Yeah? That is indeed the heart of the possible. So I'm saying, I'm now overnight, as a consumer, able to create a better customer service than the enterprise itself? This, this is completely, I call it, insane. So the power of the customer is becoming enormous. So we need to step up and make sure that we make big step in the delivery of our customer service. At the same time, as human beings, we are limited. The call center agent is limited in the knowledge. Well, guess what? If you bring such a productivity tools to them, they can deliver an awesome service. And I'm sure that the call center agent, if he is able or she is able to tell that story, they also will have a personal level of satisfaction, which I think is, is, is higher. The power of common knowledge. Again, we see here Sophie. And what is, I think, very important also is that we know who Sophie is. Sophie is a customer of us, and she has a mobile subscription. No landline, no television description. We also know that she is a bad payer. So I think Sophie is now asking, in whatever language that she wants, she can ask it in French, she can ask it in English, in Flemish. It does not matter anymore for us. Yeah? But to also look to the answer that we have been giving to her. Yeah? We know her situation. So to offer a bundle would have not created a convenience. So we have said, okay, you want to have television, we can give you a single service and activate it. Uh, overnight instead of, of, of bringing a bundle to her. Two things we have learned out of that. First of all, the convenience factor. If I would have proposed a bundle to Sophie, knowing that she already has it financially difficult, this would create a bad feeling from her side. At the same time, 
yeah, in generative AI, and this is the challenge around leakage, I cannot share them the fact that I know that she maybe has been hard in paying her bills. So I need to make damn sure that when I answer the question, I do not expose the fact that I know this uh, perfect. And then lastly, what I want to mention here, we want to leverage on private information. Yeah? And always making the analogy is that everybody said the move to a cloud will save a lot of money, and a lot of you ended up paying even more money. I think also here, and I think I'm still do not know the answer, but we still need also the fact of if we bring information into play, it's tokenized and there is a financial model behind that. That's also something that we need to create. We can create a better world, yeah, but it needs to be a better world also at a fair price. Okay. And this is the big excitement. I have two excitements to tell today, but this is big. And every customer, they were flabbergasted when they saw this. If I create an answer, it's not just good enough to just to create an answer. If I need to tell my daughter about how to drag a banking statement out of a banking app, if I give her five keywords, it's enough. Because she knows she's digital. She knows how to do it. If I call my father of 80 years old, if I give him five words, <laughs> I'm getting nowhere. I need to be very, very descriptive. So look to Victor. He's 75 years old. I need to be very, very descriptive to Victor in the steps that he needs to take into account. So imagine yeah, your call agent knowing that Victor is 75 years old. You give him the perfect guidance to tell a story and give an answer, which I think Victor will like. Imagine that you need to ask Victor also to install an app on his iPad. Yeah? So I think for me, I think this, 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 I think this is an excitement where I think if we are in customer service, everybody wants, wants to bring this into the kind of uh, reality. The magic of prompt engineering. I will come on back, but prompt engineering, if I talk about tailored Gen AI, then prompt engineering is your masterpiece. And look here to Peter. Peter thinks that he uh, will be able to fool us. He will test the system. And we actually went to a telco and to show this. Because Peter says, I've seen that if I would buy now a new subscription, I would get a discount of 25%. What happened if I now just cancel my subscription and I subscribe under the name of my wife? As you're part of the same family, it's not allowed. So you see the answer that has been created is the fact that Victor could try but will not fly. I think what is also important here is what we call the tone of voice. In an enterprise context, I'm sure that all of your enterprises have defined a way of how to communicate to your customers, a kind of communication style. So you don't only need to have an, a good answer, you also need to make sure that it's applied in the context of your communication style. And I think the art of prompt engineering is there again, uh, making uh, the big difference. And if you want to take one picture today, I think that's my golden slide. And prompt engineering in the context of generative AI is something that we all need to master. It's not an engineering piece. It's an art. And look here. It's like you get access to the universe. You have the access to a knowledge which is as big as the universe. If I want to create and bring source some value out of it, I will need to start peeling the onion to get to a pointed, very quality answer. And that's what we do with the art of prompt engineering. We are working together very closely with Google on this. And still, let's be honest, it's an every week still discussion topic about how we fine tune the role around prompt engineering. And look here. We are. That defines our belonging. 
Are we acting in the financial world? Are we acting in the domain world, in the retail world? I think that is what we define. We're also a character and a name. Which job role do we have? Do I am a forum operator? I'm a call agent. I'm a CEO of a company, and I have a name. Then you define the mission. The, def the, the mission defines a little bit the behavior. Because I can ask a question, I can give immediately a response. But I also can say, no, no, don't give immediately a response. Ask a few extra questions to fine tune and to get more knowledge about the situation to be there pointed. Because let's be honest, prompt engineering, you want to do two things, I think, which I think I'm sure has been one of your main concerns, leakage, pre leakage prevention and hallucination prevention. And let's be honest, I think we need to make sure that we know a lot of information, we bring a lot of information into play to create that perfect answer, but we cannot just be transparent in everything that we play back. Maybe there is a privacy rule that we are not allowed to share back, for instance, the amount of money that he or she earns at a month. Yeah? Or, I think we had a nice example, if you're 70 years old and you go to a bank, you don't get a loan anymore. That's somewhere in the product description. I cannot just say bluntly to a 70 year old guy that is asking for a loan, guess what? You will not get it. Yeah? You potentially will defer it to, a, to an age. The history aspect is also a very nice one. Yeah? Like I said, in the, in the multi-channel approach, what is the biggest frustration is the reset of the discussion. And I think here also in the context of our tailored generative AI approach, we've built in, we have a history, a history of all the sessions, and we know our customer. We know our customer, and we're always building back on what we have learned out of the, of the time. Then defining the context. You know that bringing that information into play we're taking there an abstract of the text blocks that we will use that we finally then indeed will classify as truths, which we called embeddings, which I think is an, a very important perspective. And defining that context is also very key in the context of saying, okay, don't assume anything. If you cannot create the answer because it's not part of the knowledge perspective, don't try to be creative. Make sure that you hand over to a human agent perspective. And then lastly, I think, in detail, the personalization approach, which I have seen. We used the Palm 2, the Bison version. I like the picture. Yeah? And we also have learned here something around Levy. It's, a, again, a, a very nice example of reasoning. Can I ask, can I borrow money? He's a customer. Yeah, we confirm he can, uh, he can uh, borrow some money from us. Can I lend 10K? No problem, I can lend 10K. Can I lend 5K? If I can lend 10K, I can have 5K, but try to do that with a traditional chatbot, you will not get this answer. So again, the reasoning is there. But I think what is more important here is also we challenged, we challenged the large language model to do calculations. We uploaded a PDF with formulas in it, yeah, and we challenged to do calculations. Bad idea. And that's also the reason why as Cognizante we have what we call our AI cognitive framework. Because there's some things that an LNM can do. But in the context of our use case and use case delivery, you see we will always make a combination of still AI, narrow AI together with generative AI. And if you want to know more, we as Cognizant have even built eh, a kind of neuro model orchestrator where we bring together that AI and narrow, uh, Gen AI and narrow AI world together. If I run a KYC process, I need to make damn sure that the outcomes are right. Because if they are not right, I can, I can get indeed a uh, find. So again, put it in a context yeah, and use it for the context uh, that it is there. The last big excitement is this one. And the left, the left is there just for, uh, to be able to understand the dialogue. It's really about what is in the middle and on the right. And what you see there, we have our dear friend Levy, who is speaking Flemish, who is asking a question. And you see on the right there that Noor, who is sitting in Manila, is having 
a simultane is having, is orchestrating the dialogue with him. And you see what's happening. Levi is asking a question. Nor gets it translated into her local language. Generative AI is immediately proposing to her what a potential good answer would be that she could give to him. And she needs only to confirm. And it's translated and it's going back into, into, uh, into Flemish. Did you get it? Language is not a constraint anymore. Yeah? How much of our customer services department have we tried to off-track and offload to lower price countries in trying to reduce our cost? But on the back of what? Delivering a worse customer service? Well, here you see now language is not a barrier anymore. And I think yeah, you also get Noor, who is much more happy to create a quality answer back, so she's more motivated in doing that. And you see on the other side of the world, I'm sure that Levi is also getting extremely happy with the answer that he is, uh, he is getting. OK. Our lessons learned around Genetive AI that we have applied within these financial customers and also within the telco customers, I would summarize as three main important things. The first thing is about finding the use case. Do not underestimate this. Because Genetive AI has a multi-task dimension and can play in your process not one role, but maybe thousand roles in trying to identify what the art of the opportunity is within the use case with the applying generative AI, I think it's a masterpiece. That's also the reason why you see that to be able to achieve this, we're also bringing many different roles into play to be able to do that. This needs to incorporate not only engineering, but also a very advanced level of design thinking. The second part is then we start doing something with it. And we call it a cognitive framework. Yeah? Like I said, you want to create the best answer. It's bad for calculations. You want to still make a combination between traditional AI and generative AI in creating the best response and the best answer to that. And that the art of prompt engineering is your masterpiece, is your Marcus, ma ma master orchestrator. But then we need to bring it into production. And the responsible AI equation, I think it was also this morning mentioned multiple times, we cannot export this towards the future. I'm an old guy. I'm 25 years in the industry, and I started 25 years ago discussions about master data management. I have customers that now start spending money on it. That's the same also with MLOps. Yeah? I think we have been talking about it for many years. Already. How many have acted and implemented in a serious way? We cannot export it anymore. If we want to be serious with generative AI, we will need to do it in a responsible way in an enterprise world. And so we need to professionalize the way of working. And you see there also, whatever is in your use case, in the context of your prompt engineering on a responsible AI, it's always a combination of three things. You need AI and engineering, but you also need a lot of strategy and design elements. And do not forget, compliance and regulation is also key. And I'm coming from Europe. We have, again, the masterpiece of the European AI Act. So by default, there is no escape anymore around uh, the, legal, the, the, the legal stuff that we need to do. But at the same time, in your use case identification, you will need to ask the question, if I use a large language model, if that model is in line with my ethical standards within my company. I don't know how many of you have defined ethical standards within your company, but you will need to make them available and even test your two, test use case against, uh, against this. Last, if I read the press, I'm always thinking and listening about doom thinking. The world is going busted. We are again killing all jobs with generative AI. No. Yeah, we are impacting big time knowledge workers. But do not forget what we just talked about is the fact that, first of all, to be able to do something successful with generative AI, we will more than ever need a soccer team. Because the collaboration will be key. Our user research, experience design people, front-end developers, and front engineers will need to work and group together as one team. 
but there are also many new jobs that will be created. I call it the ethical sourcing manager, the bias specialist, the AI product manager, the data detective. So okay, we all will save a lot of time in our work in the context of doing analysis and research. We will get more quality back or more quality time back, but equally also we'll see there are a lot of roles. And you see here also a little bit of a view about the way of how we think in a kind of four-layered approach about applying generative AI. You have your interaction layer, you have your generative AI layer, you have your computation layer. Yeah? And I think we learned out of the past if we implement AI, it was not because we have developed the best AI that it was used by somebody. They need to trust it, but they also need to be make sure that it works in a kind of performance and a good way. And then lastly but least, yeah, playing and using our own private information and bringing that in play, I think is key. To come a little bit to conclusion, I'm always saying, who doesn't want to have a second brain? I think we all do. Yeah? My wife is telling me that she is my second brain. Yeah? Yeah. But, um, so I think, yeah, I think we get now an extension to our brain. And I want to repeat also, I think, one of our famous statements of our CEO. I think we are all constrained in our intellectual capacity. With generative AI, that intellectual capacity that becomes available has extended. So we will get much more time to focus on innovation and value creation. And I think that's the magic opportunity, I think I believe for all of us. But I think for me the four key words is, do not forget there's a lot of excitement in the market, but we still will need to apply it into an enterprise context. And that's a little bit more complex. We need to do it in a responsible way. Collaboration will be key, and I think prompt engineering will be more than ever yeah, leading in, uh, in, 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 in that perspective. And I want to thank you also for being here, but I also want to thank my heroes. Yeah? And these are my heroes. They have been able to make the art of the possible possible. And look to Hugo. I never forgot the day that he came into my office and said, Gregory, it is a beast. Yeah? And it was the art of saying, how can I now manage the beast? And I think with the art of prompt engineering, we succeeded in managing the beast. But let's be honest, I think there's still a lot to learn. And there is certainly a lot of still yeah, co collaborate together with you in, in making this kind of game-changing step a reality within our enterprises. Thank you.